This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. What's up, everybody? I'm back for another episode of the Average Savage podcast. Our special guest today is Ryan Rucco. Ryan, how's it going? Good, man. Good. Happy to be with you, Paul. Yeah, appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's just go back in time a little bit. How about how did you get started in broadcasting? Oh, man, I uh, I always wanted to be in broadcasting. I mean, uh, basically, since I was 10 years old, I would pay attention to the announcers when listening to games with my dad. Um, and I always thought I if I can't play, I would want to announce. Uh, and um, then I went to Fordham uh, WFUV at Fordham, our radio station there. My mentor, Bob Ahrens, just really accelerated the learning curve. I had an internship with the Yes Network. Um, and then uh, via my work at WFUV, was exposed to a lot of people in the industry, a lot of bosses, producers, directors at ESPN Radio. I started doing random updates. Uh, that was while I was doing stats um, and interning uh, at the Yes Network. And then just kind of slowly built up each thing to eventually uh, – get to the place where I'm fortunate enough to be at today. Yeah, for sure. Now I know. So, so tell me a bit, a little bit about like maybe like your first broadcasting job and like, just like odd jobs that you had like in between and like before you quote unquote made it, I'd say. So when I was in college, I worked for, uh, I think I started my senior year of high school. And then I, in my sophomore year of college, I also worked for a GNC mm -hmm. uh, supplement store. Um, and, uh, it's the only job I've ever been fired from. Um, but I, I was just, I was putting in more and more time into my broadcasting and my manager there was like, look, like I, you know, I'm sure you're going to do great, but like, I have to let you go. You're too unreliable with this. Cause I was, you know, calling out left and right to go do broadcasts and stuff at Fordham. So, uh, it was the right move by her. Um, and, uh, and, uh, it, when I first started in, senior year of high school uh that summer my best friend and I both worked at a GNC together and we would literally like it, it was the story we were at the location was so just dead there was like no one there so we would literally like make tape balls and try and throw them at the CoQ10 supplements and see if we could get them to fall off the shelves like that's what we would do um which uh, luckily they didn't break when they fell off the shelves. Otherwise it would have been a problem, but, uh, but yeah, but then my first, uh, my first job was doing stats in the booth for Yankee telecast. After I was an intern, Jared Boschnack, Ashley Fagazi, uh, two executives, I guess, who are two of my favorite people, they noticed my work ethic. Um, and when I was an intern and they were like, they noticed that I knew the game. They knew I was at Fordham and I was doing broadcast in there. And they were like, Hey, we have this opening for being a statistician in the booth for Yankees telecast at home. Would you be interested? And I'd never done stats, but I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to get to be in the booth during Yankee games. Are you kidding me? Of course. Going to get to sit with Michael K and, and meet Ken Singleton and Bobby Mercer and David Cohn and Paul O'Neill and Al Leiter and John Flaherty. And I just, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and so, uh, I started doing stats and I, I kind of like, I didn't really have a blueprint as to how to do it. I just kind of um, thought about it th through the perspective of like, what would I want to know if I was at home watching and how can I help Michael? Um, and I crushed that role. I continued to make an impression and, uh, and was able to, um, to, to really learn uh, like more about the broadcast industry as I was sitting there doing stats uh, for Michael in the booth. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I know you're like you're like a hybrid because you do basketball, baseball, uh, boxing, too. Um, I don't know how many people do it, but I mean, I think you do everything really well. So how did how, like how did you like how did you maneuver into going from baseball to, to basketball and now boxing, too? Yeah, I think like, you know, my so being at Fordham, I, I kind of I learned play by play for baseball, softball, basketball, football. And I got a good amount of reps in all those sports uh, via the broadcast I did on air there at WFUV. And then also via demo broadcasts that I would do. Um, and I liked all of them. Like I enjoyed all of them. Uh, there was a, just an energy to being on the air with all of them. And I always thought I'd like baseball best, but when I was in college, I actually liked broadcasting basketball and football even more because I liked the action of it. 
Um, now I like them all equal, I'd say, because I get to do Yankees. You know, maybe I'd feel differently if it was a different team I was doing, but getting to do the Yankees makes it pretty great. Um, but I, I, I just kind of like tried to, I mean, I had, I was a diehard sports fan. So I was very familiar with the sports and like the strategy. And, you know, I, I always prided myself on having a coach's type mind uh, when it came to baseball, especially, but then also basketball and football. And then I was around amazing analysts and I would learn more from them. So there were certain nuances to the NBA game. I didn't know. But, you know, by working with Mike Fratello, by working with Jim Spinarco, by working with Hubie Brown, you know, I, I learned um, and I learned more and more about the game. And uh, and then, uh, you know, you just like learn little piece of terminology, little strategy, things like that. And it helps you. And with football, uh, I, you know, same kind of thing, you know, like doing games with Bill Polian. All of a sudden you're learning even more about strategy and with boxing. I was always a casual fan, but I didn't really know the sport at all. And I just had to do a ton of homework um, to be able to feel like I could be on the air and give a representative broadcast. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I talked to uh, Max Kellerman um, and I talked to Joe Tessitore uh, and they both were unbelievably helpful. And I just, and I talked to, um, you know, a variety of, of different Steve Farhood who runs uh, ring ring magazine and, um, uh, and uh, uh, Barry Tompkins and, and people who had done boxing forever. And, and they just really taught me a lot. And I studied a ton and I watched all these old fights. Like I was watching old fights on YouTube for hours upon hours a day. Cause I just think it's like, if you, if you take pride in what you do, mm -hmm. you will, you will do whatever you have to do to prepare to be able to do that. You know? Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I looked at it is I'm never going to get on the air unless I feel prepared so what do I have to do to feel prepared? And I tried to come up with that and was able to kind of come up with a formula. Which, uh, which boxing events have you covered so far? So I've done, um, I've done a couple Canelo fights. Um, I've done uh, one of the biggest fights I did. I did for the, I did the international feed of when Andy Ruiz uh, upset Joshua. Yeah. Um, so Shocked the world, yeah, at, at the Garden. That was amazing. And that was Anthony Joshua's first fight um, in the United States. Um, so that's one of the bigger ones I, I did. Uh, Canelo's first fight at Madison Square Garden. I did uh, Canelo against Daniel Jacobs in Las Vegas. I did. Uh, so I've done uh, I've done some really really good ones, really fun ones. Uh, I, I'd say uh, I did one of these. I forget if I did Jake or Logan Paul, but I did one of those fights too in Miami around Super Bowl uh, last year in 2020. So uh, yeah, so I've gotten to do some fun events. All right, so now I just got to ask you: Do you think uh, Jake Paul is going to beat Ben Askren? Man, you know the one thing I wait. Which one's the older brother? Uh, Logan. Okay, so Jake's the younger brother. Yeah, I did Jake's fight then, his first professional fight. I wouldn't bet against that guy because he. He's just, he takes it super seriously. Like he really, he really, really like studies the art of it. He has a breathing coach. Um, he's like, he's, he's seriously invested. So before I can make an official prediction, I have to dive more into the fight and what I, yeah. what I think about it and kind of really evaluating. But I will say like, I think like, I don't laugh at like Jake Paul's ability. I'm like, no, no, he can, he can box yeah all right it's coming up soon so i guess we'll see yeah i gotta do my homework quickly <laughs> um and then yeah just going to like the yes network and the yankees like what about any predictions for the yankees this year man i i mean i think this is a yankee team that uh has as good a chance to win the world series as anybody you know mm -hmm. in the majors maybe you say the dodgers more because they're the defending champs and they've you know retooled an already stacked team but you know i look at the yankees and i health is the number one key but to me, the biggest question mark going into the season was the starting pitching. And so far through a week, they've acquitted themselves beautifully. Uh, Corey Kluber looked really good. Jamison Tyone looked great. Uh, Jordan Montgomery looked outstanding. And Garrett Coles looked like Garrett Cole. Um, so I, I feel good about that. I also feel good about some of the arms. And I had to pick up the slack with Zach Britton out, uh, with Justin Wilson out. Uh, some guys who you're going to get back at some point this season, Britton being the most important one. So 
I think the, you know, I think the, the lingering questions will be the, the shortstop defense of Glaber Torres, and then also making sure there's enough versatility in the lineup that you don't have too many of the same kind of hitters. Uh, and, and, you know, those could end up proving to be uh, difficult questions to answer, but as of now, I feel, I feel, I feel really good about this Yankee team. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel the same way. I feel like they're just missing every couple of past years. To, to yeah, I know years. they're close. They're on the doorstep. Yeah. They're on the doorstep. Yeah, exactly. Um, since you're a hybrid going into now WNBA, uh, I know you cover a lot. Basically that's why it's like funny. Cause like, I know you've done the boxing and stuff and I definitely heard you. I just couldn't remember any of the, Yeah, I always, yeah. I always feel like I just hear your voice. Uh, even yeah. on like social media, like the clips, it's always, I'm like, is that, that's definitely Ryan again. Well, that's good, man. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's not bad to be ubiquitous, so I'll take it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, going into the WNBA, like, uh, I know you've been covering it for a while. Like what are, what are the changes you've seen, like the growth in it? And I see a ton of growth. Um, I see, you know, first of all, let's just say this first and foremost, before we get to anything, you know, extra about how amazing these women off, are off the floor, which they are, um, about what change makers they are, uh, which they are, about their social consciousness, which is incredible and admirable. First and foremost, they're great at basketball, you know, like, and it's entertaining basketball. And I think that, you know, maybe people don't understand how far the game has come from where it started in this league, but it's an incredibly entertaining product. It really is. And I didn't know that when I first got involved now to be, this will be my ninth season. So nine years ago. Um, but it is, it's an incredible product. And so I think first and foremost, the game is in better shape than it's ever been before. I think there's more attention on it than ever before. I think by almost every measurable metric, we're seeing growth, which is super encouraging. Um, and I, I just feel really excited about people now feeling invested uh, and energized to check out this product. And um, I believe that once they check it out, they're going to be hooked because that's how great the basketball is. Uh, and that's how amazing these young women are. So I, I'm really excited to, uh, to kind of see where the league goes this year and the, and the growth, especially coming off historic ratings for the NCAA women's tournament, which I was fortunate enough to to get to broadcast with ESPN. I'm super excited to see uh, where the W grows from here. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't know if you saw it today, they released uh, the New Jersey. Did you get yeah. to see it? Yeah. What'd you, what'd you think them. of those? Ah, uh, dude, I love them. I any, love any, them. Fav any favorites by just, yeah, I know you just saw them. We just saw them like they just released like an hour ago. Yeah. I, Seattle's look great to me. Uh, I really like Seattle's. Um, I, I think if I remember right, I really like Chicago's as yeah, well. Those, those are the ones that I think stood out the most. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to look into them. But these are the kind of things we need to do, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I can say this with total and complete confidence. Kathy Engelbert is just a game changer. Uh, she is an incredible commissioner. I think she just is so on top of the different ways to grow this, this game. Um and uh, and this is one of the ways, right? So I'm really excited to see where she continues to lead this league. Yeah, definitely. And then lastly, on the basketball side, uh, <laughs> do you think the Nets are gonna are gonna pull it off? I do. I do. I think that um, you know, I think they're the most talented team in the league, uh, which is not me going out on that much of a limb. But I, I think that you know, look, the number one key for them is going to be getting healthy. You know. KD just getting back after missing 23 straight games. Harden has been the MVP in my opinion this season, but now he's down with a hamstring injury. How long does he, how long is he out? And then you're not going to have much of a runway to get the chemistry right um, before the playoffs start. But I'll say this, you know, the Nets have found ways to win even with guys out. They just went 19 and four with KD hurt. Um, and I think they've had so much change to the roster from the start of the season Plus, this is a year that requires more malleability than normally anyway because of COVID and the restrictions and just, you know, protocols and what everybody's having to deal with that I believe that we will see um, the Nets find a way. As long as, as long as they have those three healthy, as long as Kyrie Harden and KD are healthy uh, 
for the, you know, for the conference finals and for the finals, I do believe the Nets will find a way to emerge victorious, but um, don't count out Utah. Don't count out the Lakers if they get healthy, you know, don't count out the Clippers. Don't count out uh, Milwaukee or Philadelphia. All those teams, you know, could still win a seven game series. I just think the Nets will. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm a Yankees and Nets fan. So I'm hoping for, for two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 hey man, you know what you are, this is a rare breed right here, Paul. <laughs> no, it's funny. It's like all the things I like and you do, like the yeah. WNBA, the boxing. I'm into boxing. I do I work with boxers, all things like that. Oh. I don't even know if you know. We, we're kind of co-workers. I did some stuff for the DDS network on social media. Uh, oh, nice, Paul. Yeah, I ran the, the live games for, the, for all the teams, actually. Oh, um, that's awesome. I got dude. to do all of them. Actually, the, the craziest one was I was working uh, when Aaron Boone, uh, when he yelled at the umps, and that one went viral. Oh. Yeah. the savages yeah 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 <laughs> that was that was one of the great viral moments yeah. in major league history <laughs> yeah and I, at the time i was just like clipping it i was just like all right this is pretty interesting and then it just yeah. like blew up and i was like all right i didn't think it was gonna be that big but yeah, yeah no, it dude it crazy right I'm, yeah. i mean it was i was great for the sport i think yeah yeah for sure yeah and okay. then I, obviously we're we're on a podcast now you have a podcast with cc sabathia r2c2 um yeah. how did how did you guys get that started and, and why you know, we um, we always had this relationship uh, since he came to the Yankees in 2009. I was at the time doing our in-house broad in-house hosting for the scoreboard um, for the Yankees, and uh, we connected over uh, over our interest in basketball, actually, um, and watching the Lakers in the finals. And uh, we just developed a relationship. And then I was hosting shows shortly after that on ESPN Radio in New York, and CC would listen. And then we'd end up with um, we ended up with some good common friends. Shout out to Matt Nimer and Matt, Matt Siegel, and uh, we uh, and Brian Axelrod, and, and we um, we just connected. And we used to say, "Hey, we should do something together. We should do a podcast together someday, whatever." And uh, but we never did anything about it. And then in 2017, in the spring. I had stopped doing my daily radio shows and CC reached out to me, said, cuz it's time, let's do this. And we had a great conversation about if we did a podcast, what we wanted to look like, uh, the players tribune, thanks to them. Uh, they were the first to back it and support it. And we just kind of grown it since then uninterrupted was a great partner after players tribune. And now, uh, we have the ringer and Spotify as a partner and they've been fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Did you see like podcasts blowing up like it has? Yeah, I did. I actually, oddly, um, I know my high school girlfriend's father, when I was 18 years old, told me like, podcasts are going to be the next big thing. Watch. And he was like, you know, 10 years ahead of it. Yeah. But he was a smart guy. And so it always kind of was in my mind that at some point, this is going to blow up. And so you know, I did, I, the, I did see it happening, you know, once I was doing R2C2, like, I love the Joe Rogan podcast. And the thing I love about it is like the long form and getting to really dive into nuance and, and getting to hear experts um, be more specific about certain topics. And, and so I, I understood the appeal of that, almost like an audio form of what Grantland was when Bill Simmons started that at ESPN. You know, that's what podcasts could. And then, and then I, I would listen to Bill Simmons podcast and love that. And, and then uh, Oprah Super Soul. And, and so I saw all these things. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. When I get in a car now, I want to listen to a podcast. So yeah, I did, I did kind of feel like it was going that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel now. Like I don't even like, I rather listen to podcasts now just than like watch TV almost. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm in the same boat, man. I'll take a podcast any day. <laughs> Um, what about what, what advice would you give to other like young sports broadcasters trying to uh, make it, man? You know, I always say this to, uh, to when I talk to young kids and young broadcasters, I'm like, in some ways it's the best time to be getting into this business because, um, it's, you know, there's never been more media outlets, right? There's never been more ways to get reps in, you know, and reps are key to getting better. Uh, but in some ways it's the hardest because there's never been more competition. Yeah. So I always say like, you know, lean into your passions, make sure you're prepared every time you go on the air, uh, get reps, however you can get them. Even if it means, you know, into a, a microphone at home, calling a game off a of TV, recording podcasts just to yourself, mm -hmm. all that stuff gets you better. Um, be prepared. Uh, 
you know, don't take any opportunity for granted. Every demo broadcast you do treat like a real one. Um, and uh, when you get opportunities at a network or as an intern or whatever it might be, um, just show your work ethic and be a great teammate. I want to learn more about you, your skill sets, your talent, your, you know, your desires and, uh, and some doors could end up opening as a result. Yeah, definitely. Are you ready uh, for some fun questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right. What's your, what's your favorite song right now? Oh, my favorite song right now. Hmm. That's a good question. Cause I feel like, ah, uh, probably something from Eminem's last new album. Um, mm. Let me see. Let me, let me look up what song I would say off of his album. Although I like the, uh, it came out a couple months ago, but I really do like the driver's license uh, song. What it's called, driver's license, right? It's like super hip with Olivia Rodrigo. My wife helping me out. Yeah, <laughs> I like that song. It's really good. It's really good. Um, we check. Yeah, it's really good. But I would say Zeus by Eminem and White Gold. I, I really like Zeus. That's that's a great song. All right. What about what are what are three jerseys you want that you don't have? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, three jerseys I want that I don't have. Uh, Are you a jersey guy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I am. I am. Um, I have. You mean like Sports signed shoes. and framed or to wear? Uh, to wear. To wear. Um, Joe DiMaggio, uh, a Yankees five jersey I don't have. Um. I would say, uh, I would say uh, Maradona uh, Napoli jersey, um, and then what would be my last jersey I would pick that I don't have that I want to wear? Who's someone who, you know? I used to have a Chris Mullen jersey on the Warriors. He was like my first favorite NBA player. It doesn't fit anymore. It fit me when I was eight. You know, I, I think a I think a Chris Mullen jersey. That'd be dope. Well, all right. So you got to give me now. What which one would you want autographed? The Chris Mullen. Well, that's one? a uh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I would say autograph wise, I would love to get an ensemble of the next big three this year. Um, all right. Yeah. with uh with Harden, KD and Kyrie. Um but I I would love a, a Griffey, a Ken Griffey, yeah, Ken Griffey autographed jersey. Um and and a Tom Brady. I don't have any Brady autograph stuff. I have some good uh merch to to put in a man cave at some point in my house, but uh I would say Griffey Brady um, and the Nets big three I'll put in there. All right. I like that. All right. Last one. Who, who's your dream interview that you haven't been able to interview yet? Eminem is one of them. Although, you know, he's, he's very subdued in interviews. Um, but I, that's someone I've always wanted to interview, but I think, you know, I, I feel like there's, there's a few different people that I would choose but I think that I would want to interview someone Star Wars related um, if I could only pick one person. Um, and so I think I would choose, I think I would choose at this moment in time, either John Favreau or Kathleen Kennedy, one of them. And I just want to do a deep dive on Star Wars. All right. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, Ryan, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, could you let the listeners know where they can follow you on social media? Yeah, yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Rye Rooks, R-Y-R-U-K-E-S. On Twitter, at Ryan Rucco, R-Y-A-N-R-U-O-C-C-O. Uh, follow uh, R2C2, my podcast on Spotify. New episodes every Thursday. We have bonus episodes as well. Uh, and keep following PG.